<laughs> the uh, 27 February 2023 Jackson County Commission meeting is uh, called to order. I'd like to welcome everyone uh, that is here tonight for participating in tonight's uh, meeting. We do have a busy agenda tonight with a number of items on our new business agenda and we have several points of discussion with our uh, work session tonight. So uh, again, thank you for, for being here. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Man Manning, the County Administrator, to please call the roll to establish your quorum. Mr. Hill, Commissioner Gully. Present. District 2, Commissioner Kimmer. Present. District 3, Commissioner Buckner. Present. District 4, Commissioner McBride. Present. We do have a quorum. Thank you very much. At this time, if everyone would please stand, we'd like to ask Mr. Porter, our county attorney, to please offer our invocation, and I will lead our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Lord God, our Father in heaven, we are so blessed to live in this county and this wonderful country. We're thankful for these blessings, and we pray that we'll never take them for granted. God, we're also thankful for this time of year, the renewal of the earth in spring, and the flowers begin to bloom. We're thankful for those. Uh, things that occur in your world. We're thankful for all the things that you make possible for us. We do pray for those men and women who serve the county in so many different ways. We're thankful for them and for their families. We pray for the uh, safety and their uh, continued uh, goodwill. We pray you'll watch over us and guide us every day. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <laughs> In the packet uh, that you have tonight is the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, there are, uh, as I said, a number of items on our, our session tonight. We will also go into an executive session tonight. Uh, to discuss uh, matters of purchase or sale, really lease of property, and discuss good name and character as, as part of the executive session at the end of the regular session. Uh, with that, uh, do we have any awards or presentations? If not, I believe we have two speakers tonight, and we certainly welcome you to be here and, and speak uh, to the commission and, and to our citizens. I always forget this part, but uh, we, as I said, we do have an agenda. It's here in the packet. I do have, a, have, have to have a vote on that. So do I have a motion to approve the 27 February 2023 agenda? I'll make that motion. I have a motion to have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, passes unanimously. So with that, now we'll get to public comment. So. Uh, Mr. Logan, Casey, would uh, you please come forward? We have a microphone here for you. And I'm going to ask you just a few questions. It's for the purpose of, uh, of the record. Uh, state your full name, please. My name is Terry Logan Casey. Thank you. And uh, your address, please. Um, my address? Which town? Oh, oh Stevenson. Stevenson, Alabama. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry. And with that, let me uh, turn it to uh, District 1 Commissioner, Ms. Commissioner Gully. Uh, he's going to do an introduction for us. This is uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, fellow commissioners. This is Logan Casey. He's a uh, graduate of North Jackson High School last year. I see Logan uh, at ball games, and he's kind of dubbed the number one chief up in the, in the North Jackson area and he he loves politics and uh, he's talked he's talked to me numerous times about uh, wanting to get involved in politics and he, he likes politics so he uh, wanted to come tonight and speak to us a little bit about uh, his love for politics and and some of the programs that's been beneficial to him uh, in his in his little short life uh, that, that get government funding and things that are important to him He's involved in the vocational rehabilitation program uh, with uh, uh, Mark Williams, and they do workforce development and on-the-job training. Uh, again, he's a, a graduate of North Jackson High School, 
he attended Epcot, and at Epcot he took classes on smart work, uh, smart work ethics, and how to fill out applications, resume writing, and he got exposure to local businesses in the county. And after graduation, he was placed into a four-week uh, uh, summer job training at Sanoa, and he went through the full interview process, and they offered him a, uh, a, a position there. And uh, so I just want to let Logan come and speak to us a little bit about, you know, his love for politics and how these government funding programs have impacted his life and been beneficial to him. So, Mr. Casey. Well, I've been started working since November, well, can't remember what day, but November. And, um, I, I've been, well, my aide, Miss Susie Smith, she, she works with me, and she helps me in Santa America, INC, and, um, um, we went all the way down there, and, no, I, I got it. I got it. Can I have 20s on that? No, I got it. Hang on. I'm still out. No, no, it's okay. It's, 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 Thank it, you. It just takes my time. Okay. Anyway, um, so, I've been due to the 30s and the 40s. And well, 40s is a small one, and the big one ones the 30s. And December, I've been doing nylon. It was a machine, and um, a lot of machines everywhere. And um, since I use a clock in, I clock in at 8 8:48, and. And then I go to lunch at 12. Then I go to the bathroom at like 12.15. And uh, uh, I go about to work like 12.20 o'clock. And since, since what I got done, well, since what I got done in my 30s, since before I, I mean, since before I go on, it's like 12 o'clock, and some I put the thirds on my table, and and then when I went back to work, some I put the 40s on, on my table, it was like nine packs or 10 or something or like that, and now for me, I was, I was, well, I ain't got no time to finish all my 40s since I put some about, I will say like, about like nine packs on the bunking. And, and it was four packs left on my table. And then if it gets to 30, then I'll stop because I got no time to finish them. Anyway, it's since it's almost like three o'clock. And when a bell rings, I, I'll leave, and then I clock out three, four o'clock. So, I like to work the Sano, and I liked it. And then uh, I've been paid pretty good when I work hard. People tell me I would do a good job, and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, so, so, yeah, and December, I took a day off in December because it's Christmas, and, well, so you know it's, and um, I got back on January, and then I work on February, and And um, just do what I do, what I usually do. So, 
Well, thank you for coming and talking to us, Logan. Just to kind of in summation, you know, Logan went through the program and he's been given life skills and now he's, made, he's able to maintain uh, employment and, and learn a skill that's beneficial to Sonoma and to the program he's in. He starts off with a, with a job coach furnished by the program and they teach him how to do it. And I think you've been released for a couple of months now, right? Yeah, a couple of months now. He's out on his own, having, having full-time employment. So. Yeah, well, part-time. Part-time employment. Yeah, yeah part-time. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I've been doing first shift, so, yeah. But it's a good joint cooperation between yeah. our, our agencies and our industry and able to help folks like Logan. Thank you for coming down and being with us, Logan. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Logan. And he also uh, drives the public bus system. Oh, the agent, Jackson mm County. -hmm. He rides that to work in the morning. So that's a big help right there. Because we live in Stevenson and he works in Salzburg. So that is a very big help. So I'll have to shout out to them too. So. so, Logan, let me say how much we appreciate you being here tonight and coming and speaking to this group. It's very important. We certainly thank you for what you're willing to do to come here and, and share with us and talk with us, okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Next we have Mr. Jim Jordan. <coughs> Mr. Jordan, I'll also ask you a couple I'm sorry. Of, what, I'll ask you a couple of questions sure. also. Uh, state your full name, please. James H. Jordan. And Nobody your there. address, please. 561 Wind Road, Scottsboro, Alabama. And you're speaking for yourself or for? I'm actually speaking in support of soil and conservation and the uh, extension agency. Okay. I know that's much. work session kind of stuff, but I wanted to, <clears throat> I just want to come and voice my support to the commission on behalf of both of those agencies. As important as agriculture is to Jackson County, and it's an outsized contributor to our economy, <clears throat> I think it's a valuable resource to have both of these folks located in Jackson County. I understand there are some financial considerations against with soil and conservation, and <clears throat> not so much with the, the extension, but both of those people are very important to what we do here in the county. I personally work closely with Matt and Kim, Vanessa, the other people, that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at the extension agents. And I've seen the work that these folks do and the contribution they make to the community, <coughs> excuse me, really worse today. And I just want to come in front of the commission and say, as an interested volunteer in Jackson County, I want to put my support out there for these folks in the financial support or political support, whatever you can do to keep soil and conservation in the county <coughs> and to support the work that the Extension Agency does. Okay. Uh, any questions? No, thank you for volunteering and speaking on their behalf. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, uh, we will now move into the new business portion of our agenda. And in your package, you have the uh, February 13, 2023 uh, minutes for, for that board meeting. Um, do I have a motion to approve uh, or to adopt the minutes from the February 13, 2023 meeting and work session? I make that motion. We have a motion of a second. I'll second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. At our last meeting, we had uh, a request uh, to execute a post-retirement employment uh, contract. The contract would be between the Jackson County Commission and Ms. Donna Frederick. Uh, would, she would be employed in the category of an exempt employee, part-time employee, and uh, would work with the office of the Jackson County Probate Judge uh, to assist in training uh, of the hired elections administrator, accounting clerk, along with other responsibilities of election administrator, accounting clerk. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the post retirement contract for employee in probate office? No, I make that motion. We have a motion to have a second. I'll second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. A little over a year ago, uh, 
the county uh, commission put together with the help of uh, uh, TARCOG uh, a request uh, for a grant uh, to assist in a county plan. And um, we have uh, been requested by TARCOG to resubmit that uh, request uh, for a grant. And uh, so uh, I'd like to move to discussion before this and I'd like to ask Ms. Sarah James uh, from TARCOG uh, to uh, discuss the objective and purpose of the plan. Sure. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Sarah James. I'm the Director of Economic Development and Planning for TARCOG, or Top of Alabama Regional Council of Governments. For those of you that aren't aware in the room, we serve five counties, 46 municipalities, um, and predominantly help with economic development assistance through grant writing, project administration, planning efforts, um, and so on and so forth. I'm joined here today by Leslie Wright in the back of the room, our economic development specialist, who is actually the champion of this project and, and has written the amended grant um, application. Um, before you today to consider um, is an amendment to the resolution we prepared about a year ago. Um, you all may recall we applied for this um, opportunity through um, EDA's American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA funding opportunity, which was highly competitive. Um, and we were not successful in that. We've had follow-on conversations with EDA and they are supportive of it. And in the time since, they have had a new prioritization of funding focused on nuclear power plant closures. I'm sure everyone in the room knows <coughs> of a nuclear power plant that exists in this county right. and um, makes you all eligible for that opportunity. Um, but basically the consideration is to apply for EDA funding for a countywide comprehensive plan. Um, to identify economic resilience opportunities from everything from infrastructure to schools, um, to look at opportunities for economic growth, um, where the gaps are and what we can do to solve those um, challenges and, and have an action plan for the county to move forward on. Um, the amendment to the resolution is obviously we are uh, um, moving forward for a second um, application in this new um, NCC or nuclear closure, nuclear community closure opportunity. Um, but also to reduce the request. Um, last year we applied for approximately, I think we applied for 200,000 for EDA, and we heard from EDA that they thought it was a little expensive and thought you could get the plan in for a little bit less than that. And so we, we heard them and we're applying for 150,000 um, matched by 50,000 for a total $200,000 planning effort. Um, I think I just gave you a lot, so I'll stop there and see if there's any questions or any clarification. Any questions or comments? Uh, so, uh, uh, obviously, you've laid the foundation for for where the money is coming from. What what is the expected outcome for your comprehensive plan? What what will that kind of give us to work with? Sure, absolutely. Um, a comprehensive plan usually takes an existing um, assessment of, of current infrastructure, current land use, um, current um, school system um, challenges, and other you know economic um, opportunities and really creates an action plan that you all can work off of for the next 10 to 15 years. Most comprehensive plans are about 15 year plans, um, could be 20 years, and then you can um, subsequently update them <coughs> as you move through it. But the idea being that this gives you guys a really comprehensive framework um, to base a lot of your decision making off of moving forward for infrastructure investments, um, other grant opportunities to go after. Every funding agency, whether federal or state or local, likes to see that you are applying based off on a, a comprehensive planning effort that you've thought through what you're what you're requesting on. So this can help you generate additional funding opportunities. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Ms. James. Uh, with that, uh, the <coughs> Uh, amendment uh, to the resolution is uh, in your packet. Um, so do I have a motion to amend the resolution for EDA's economic adjustment assistance? I'll make that motion. We have a motion. We have a second. second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. The last uh, new business item on our agenda tonight is uh, one of our responsibilities is appointing uh, members to boards that uh, work to serve our county. Uh, and right now we have about 18 boards that we appoint to. Tonight we're appointing a member uh, to the Cumberland Mountain Water and Fire Protection Authority Board. 
Uh, we put out a notice about uh, a month ago uh, requesting uh, anyone that was interested to provide an application. Uh, we have one applicant, uh, is Mr. Terry Davis. He is currently serving on that board and he is requesting the opportunity to be reappointed uh, to the board. Uh, his letter of request for reconsideration is in your packet. So with that, uh, do um, I have a nomination uh, to appoint a board member to the Cumberland Mountain Water and Fire Protection Authority Board. I'll make that motion. And you're nominating uh, Mr. Davis? Terry Davis. Mr. I Terry spoke with Davis. him once more today and he's still eager to go. So, Okay. Well, we'll thank say. you very much. So with that, uh, do I have a motion to approve Mr. Terry Davis and appoint him to uh, the Economic, I'm sorry, to the Cumberland Mountain Water and Fire Protection Authority Board? I'll make that motion. We have a motion. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Unanimous vote. So, Mr. Davis, thank you very much, and uh, we will get that notif notification out uh, shortly. So that was the last item of our new business <coughs> agenda. We have several items in our work session tonight. Uh, first is just an update, um, and it is uh, from the uh, Council of Aging. And so, Mr. Coleman, if you would please. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, you'll find in your packet, I believe, a, a letter from Out Up that we have requested to sell two buses. These are older buses, 2011-2012. And the funding for these buses come from, let me get this right, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act through ALDOT and FTA. So they were funded 100% by the federal government. So if you will take the policy that's also the transit vehicle disposition replacement policy that's in your packet and go down to number two, letter A, and that's where we feel that these buses will probably be valued at. So this tells you that if they're $5,000 or less that we will get to keep all the funding. So that will go into our 131 fund, which we will use to purchase buses in the future. So our plan is a little history for some of the, well, for all of us really. We've been approved for six brand new buses through the CARES Act. That was approved about two and a half, three years ago. So three of those buses will be free to us, provided to us free. We're still waiting on those buses. That's, that's the problem. So we've got notification actually today that hopefully around the May time frame that we should receive four of those buses. So that's why we're trying to get, we're going ahead and get this process started because I want to get a fleet replacement schedule going for maintenance fuel. It'll help us with costs down the road. So that's, that's one reason why some of these buses I believe in the past were not disposed of earlier is because of the holdup of the CARES Act. So hopefully we will receive four of those buses soon and we will get on a regular fleet replacement schedule. That's my plan. So, okay. any questions? Any questions? Now, this doesn't require a vote. You're just no, notifying sir. us that you have a just, just letting you guys know <coughs> where we're at. It's on our radar. we got to get under a normal fleet replacement schedule. And Does that hold up during the COVID time? Or? I think it's across, I think it's country, nationwide. Sheriff's cars, ambulances, our buses. Um, so, are, they, are these going on, uh, like, go? Deals These right? will be placed on good deals. They have to go to public auction, and the highest bid is is what we go with. Okay. To, just so everyone knows, how many miles did, did we put on these buses waiting? Uh, I think it's in one of your letters. Two hundred fifty-one thousand on one, and two something on another one. So, so hopefully we're not going to put. We, that we, we will not be putting that on. The, on the, uh, that's correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Any further questions? No, thanks very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that update. Uh, next, in the uh, maintenance directorate, uh, we have two items. Uh, one is uh, we have a roof that's solid, solid waste that uh, we've been trying to patch for years. We, we finally got to the point we realized we need to do a roof replacement. So, 
Let me turn this over to Mr. Gann. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, I have two quotes here. I actually tried to get three quotes. I tried to get one from a local, uh, a local roofing company that does these types of roofs, and they never could get me a materials quote. So uh, we waited nearly a month, and it was it was time to. I felt it was time to move on because. This is an issue that, that needs to be fixed as quickly as we can possibly get them to do the work. Um, the roof is leaking into the lobby that the public has access to, and it's going to end up causing some issues if we, if we don't try to push forward through this. Uh, the first quote would be through Superior Roof and LLC. Both of these companies are out of Huntsville. The type of roof, it's a, it's a flat roll-on roof that's on it right now. Uh, my recommendation would be to go to a TPO type roof, which is a uh, uh, thermoplastic polyethylene, uh, and it's pretty much it's it's like a it's like a plastic that's melted over existing roofs. Uh, the membrane is about 60 millimeters thick, so it's usually it keeps the building cooler. It can seal up the old roofs and everything. Um, the first one with Superior is going to be twenty-eight thousand two hundred seventeen dollars. The estimate amount. And the next quote is from Fleming Roofing and Restoration, and their quote was for $28,850. they are both really close. Um, my recommendation would be, if, if you know you want to go through with this, that this is that I would go with Superior. Um, I had much more interaction with Superior. Uh, they came out and tested the roof, uh, assured me that it wasn't going to need any any new decking or anything like that from core samples that they did on it, and and. For the most part, it's just going to be sealing the old roof with this new material. So. Okay. Any question? So yeah, um, you, you answered my question there at the end, sort of kind of. Um, so there, they've done studies to make sure that the weight difference in this material they're putting out is not going to be a safety yes. concern. Yes, they did a core sample on the roof and the, and what they considered the worst part of the roof, and and. Said that it was that it, it was within their margins to be able to do this. So. And the HVAC is going to stay on the roof. The HVAC is not in the roof, not on the roof on the sanitation building. Okay. So that's not we don't have Good. to worry about that one. All right. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> Question I have is, uh, given the condition of the current roof, uh, do we need to move with the expediency? It would be my recommendation if it's all possible. Do we set aside the rules yes, and, and vote on this? Yes, sir. Do I have a motion to set aside the rules? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the award? And, and by the way, the the award, uh, the contract for the award of this is, is in your package. It's been reviewed by uh, our county lawyer, uh, Mr. Porter. So with that, do I have a motion to approve the award of the roofing contract for our solid waste department to Superior Roofing LLC? I'll make that motion. We have a motion to have a second. I'll say that. Have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, just an update on where we are with our courthouse HVAC uh, upgrade. Yes, we... Uh, we received bids, uh, sealed bids last month for our HVAC upgrade to the courthouse. Uh, everything went good with that process. All that we're waiting on now is a, a negotiated contract uh, with, uh, with the JMR plus H. So they're, they, we talked to Kevin, and Kevin felt like within state law, there's like a 10% negotiation rate in that. And uh, we're, they sent us a contract, but it didn't have the 10% on it, and we're asking to have the 10% on before we sign anything with them. So that's all we're waiting on. 
I would say we thought it was better to get the negotiated value rather than signing the contract and negotiating afterwards. We thought we had a little better leverage for right. doing that. So, right. <laughs> we, uh, so the update is that uh, we're still doing that, and once that is uh, uh, negotiated, we'll get an updated contract. Yes, sir. And I guess we have we can wait till the next meeting uh, to do that. Should should be to approve. Yeah, okay. Should be a problem. All right. So we'll put that on the the new business agenda for our next meeting if we get the contract update. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. But uh, next, uh, our, our human resource department. Uh, I ask Ms. Willis to come forward. We have a couple items here. One is uh, updating uh, our maintenance department job description, and the other is uh, uh, converting premium pay to retention pay. Okay, so first of all, in your packet, you should see a org chart for the maintenance department. And then second of all, there are two job descriptions in there, which would be the director and custodian. So these job descriptions have been updated, um, reviewed by us, by the maintenance director, um, and also the chairman. The journeyman is not included in here because the commission approved that in October, but you will see it on um, the organizational chart. So the goal here is to get all of our job descriptions um, updated. This is the first department that we're beginning with. And it said that they're all in the same format as well. A question, uh, tell me, were these to somewhat, some extent based upon the Auburn review of job descriptions and tried to up update that, then went out to our uh, directors for their review? Yes, sir. They were brought to us in this format, and then we have made some adjustments, and they've gone to the directors for review. Okay. Well, did you have anything to add? Just, just a, a, a question. Okay. Sorry. Uh, in the in the organization, it shows a, a straight line down of, of maintenance director, and then journeyman, custodian, 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 custodian. Is there a rank of custodians, or are they are they all of the same? They're all the same pay grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the su the supervisor um, was actually the director in charge of the journeyman and the custodians, and then the maintenance director's absence, the journeyman steps in as the assistant director. Okay. Okay. So Bill. We'll put this on the uh, agenda for the next meeting for approval. By the way, any further questions or comments regarding this? Okay. Thank you. The next item is uh, is, uh, rep is converting premium pay to retention pay. When, when the uh, president announces on the 11th of May that the uh, pandemic period is over, that uh, creates a situation where the premium <coughs> pay that we have been uh, giving our employees was based upon uh, uh, that condition. Uh, with that being uh, changed, that put us in a situation of that no longer supported the use of premium pay uh, for that. But we have worked with the IEC, and uh, they have helped us find the, the appropriate use of ARPA money to continue uh, to pay under retention pay. So let me turn it over to Ms. Willis. So also in your packet, you'll find a resolution for expenditure of the ARPA funds that looks like this, um, and then the resolution. And then you'll also see notes from the HR department that tell specifically um, examples of our uh, retention and recruitment um, issues um, and our efforts and attempts in different departments. So 93% of our employees are currently receiving premium pay that's funded by the American Rescue Plan Act for essential work performed during the COVID-19 public health emergency. The premium pay is 75 cents per hour. With the anticipation of the public health emergency ending in May of 2023, it's my recommendation that we end the premium pay. It's also my recommendation that we implement a retention and recruitment pay in the same amount with the ARPA funds in an attempt to ensure that the county compensates our existing employees and future employees in a way that will allow the county to compete with the private sector. There will be no changes in the classification pay that are receiving um, the, the 75 cents per hour. 
Um, if you all agree with this, we can begin it on April the 10th. That's the beginning of a pay period for the payroll of April the 28th. And uh, the retention pay also, because we're using ARPA funds, it expires uh, the 31st of December 2024. 2024. And so what would be required of us in payroll is that we delete the um, premium pay pay top and we begin um, implementing <coughs> one that's retention and recruitment pay and then that would be audited um, as well. So the uh, resolution that you have in the package just approves our, our transfer from premium pay to retention pay for the remaining period in the use of ARPA. Uh, I want to say thanks uh, to uh, Ms. Kelly Gilligan uh, with IEC. They called us about and notified us of, of this issue that was coming up with the use of premium pay. And they worked uh, very, very much with uh, with Bob Manning and with Michelle Willis and uh, came up with this solution for us to be able to continue to pay our, our people at, at that rate. So thanks to them. And Michelle and Bob, thanks for the work you, you guys did on this. So we'll put this, we have time to put this on our next meeting, new business, and, uh, and pass that. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, Next in our, uh, our work session uh, of the commission, uh, we have uh, uh, had discussions last year about our soil and water conservation uh, district office here and, and the great work they do in support of our ag agricultural farm cattlemen and our ag business uh, community here. Uh, and we also had discussions about the great work that uh, Matt Webb and his office and the people in the extension office do also in support of, of that community. Um, for, uh, through 2018, the commission was providing some uh, funding support uh, for uh, those uh, two offices. Uh, their work in support of uh, that, that community helps that community to become the largest contributor to the Jackson County economy at $153 million uh, per year of contribution. I don't mean to take your thunder, but I just want to say thank you for the great work uh, that, that you're doing in support of those farmers and uh, cattlemen out there in our ag businesses in the community. With that, I'm going to turn it over. Uh, first, I think we have uh, Soil and Water Conservation District would like to make a presentation or a discussion. So Mr. Dean, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just briefly, briefly I cover a few items here. The Alabama legislature adopted legislation in 1939 to establish Alabama Soil and Water Conservation District. They provide limited funding to the 67 county soil and water conservation districts throughout the state with 335 unpaid volunteer district supervisors. Jackson County Soil and Water Conservation was formed in 1958 and provided a service to farmers, producers, with uh, technical advice and assistance in conservation initiatives. Through government programs, the NRCS, National Resource Conservation Service, and Jackson County Soil and Water had provided an average of $4.4 million per year annually. The benefit to Jackson County farmers um, through this grant money is usually cost share, most of it is spent locally, buying concrete, gravels, fencing supplies, and other items to uh, complete the project. Jackson County Soil and Water Conservation District is governed by five member board, um, non-paid members, volunteers, provide oversight conservation issue efforts in the county. Uh, we employ one employee, a district administrative coordinator, the AC we call them, which is Karen here, and she works hand in hand with the NRCS uh, to help the Jackson County farmers and producers to uh, uh, on these uh, conservation projects. The state SWCC mandates certain activities 
to be conducted by the district, including educational outreach activities, schools and communities, and continued funding. These activities require travel throughout the county, materials for students, and um, some, sometimes the SW, SWCB is unable to afford this time at this time um, because the state funding is, is, is limited. Why do we need additional funding? With the next few years, Jackson County Soil and Water Conservation District will reach a point where state funding will not be enough to cover normal business activities and our reserves will be depleted. We were supposed to close. Per state legislation, when we close, so will the NRCS office. It will be, it will be discontinued to that time also. An example of funding for different counties, Cullman County's County Commission funds the SWCA for $194 million, excuse me, $194,000. They rate the second in the state as far as selling agricultural products. <clears throat> excuse me. Bowen County, they contribute 75.5 and they contribute 2% of the state agricultural sales. Madison County, 65,000. They contribute 1% to counties, to the state's agricultural sales. Limestone County contributes $32,500, 2% to the state sales. Jackson County contributes 3% to the state sales of $153,490,000 with zero contribution from the county committee. What we'd like to do is enter, enter into a long time agreement with the commission where uh, you can either fund us, uh, maybe put us in the general budget funds and the, and the, and the budget to cover the DAC payroll. Um, there's other counties, as a matter of fact, there's nine counties that the DAC is a county employee. And some counties have more than one employee. But anything that you guys can do to help us stay in business would certainly be appreciated. Uh, any questions? Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you said you a request for to, to fund the employees. Is that, is that what you're asking well, for? Well, every county does it differently. County by the best of this. Some counties have their DAC, district area coordinator, is a county employee. Mm -hmm. And some just put them, put them in the budget and get X, some X dollars per year annual. It's really up to you guys, but we take anything you can get, but we're hurting. And, well, I understand that, and so I'm just I'm just wanting to put a dollar figure on it. So what what is the re requested dollar figure? Well, the last the last time we were funded, was 2015, and if I can find that, I think it was 14,000 something dollars. What it was. So this stopped in 18. Did you say? I thought it was stopped in 18. It may be uh, county extension. It was stopped in 18. Right. Yeah, fifteen. And it was fourteen thousand something. Okay. What what does your employee cost the uh, your what does it cost per year? Mm -hmm. I really don't have the information carry you have that. The like fact a salary of thirty three two eighty. Federal, federal tax is 63.72. So basically, you, ha you have your building. Your 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 building is is covered, right? Right. So what you're having problems with is your staffing, Pay, payroll, and keeping maintaining an office. That's correct. And your utilities are they shared, or is that uh, with the NRC office? I think that's covered, covered with the NRCS office. So essentially, what you need help with is funding your employee to keep to exactly. keep this office open. So is it the funding that you receive for your building and utilities is based on being in that building or do you have flexibility on where you, where you can be? No, we get X number of dollars from state funding. I think last year like $12,000 all we received. Uh, we do have a little reserve that we're having to dip into to continue operations. Once that funding, on that, once that is depleted, we'll have to close office. And when we close that office, the NRCS will be gone all of a sudden. So, so who owns the building that you're currently in? Uh, I don't know who owns the building, but NRCS pays the rent, which is the division of USDA. Okay. The building is also shared by people across the hall, the NRCS. I mean, the 
FSA Farm Service Agency. They also went uh, under the building also. So there's multiple people paying rent. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you move into another building wouldn't wouldn't no. alleviate your situation. Okay. So that I should have asked a better question. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and so uh, you're asking for for lots of consideration. The biggest is is to have an annual allocation. Um, and I, and, and I guess the dream would be to come under the coverage of being a county employee. Is that, is that? Either right? or, but take anything you gentlemen can offer. Right, okay. Okay. Council, what, what, one of the problems that we have, I'm one of the board members, is to bring them under the county umbrella, which puts our employee under the, the county um, retirement system. Not, not telling you to start taking all the costs. You take the money that we collect and put it into the county to help pay for the payroll. Uh, the payroll we're pretty good with. The benefits is what's kind of killing us. And, and like Mr. Dane said, if we don't do something in a few years, uh, we're going to be out of funds. I mean, we're, right, we're operating in a red today. We've operated in a red the last three or four years. Um, there was some little reserve there from years ago that, that they were very fortunate to be able to put back. But we're dip, we're dipping into that every year too. You know, it's it's not real hard to see the handwriting on the wall. What's going to happen if we don't do something? When the county cut our funding out, like they did every other agency within the county, except for county employees, uh, that's when we got trouble. <coughs> so, and we we continuously had to dip into that every year, and, uh, and even including this year. So, do you, your your employee is she on separate? Are you on separate retirement? Yes. Okay. State retirement state insurance. I got you. Uh, we had we had to do that uh, like your retention program. We've had an employee change. We went through two pretty quickly afterwards after a long term employee left, went to another county, which was she became a county employee there. Again, it was all about her retirement. Right. Uh, being part of a bigger retirement system was much the same thing and it was more money. She lived in that direction anyway. Um, and, and that's kind of the kind of the dilemma we're in today. How how do we maintain that office? Uh, it's our understanding if if, we, if she goes, if our employee goes, we lose an NRCS and FSA. If you look at that money that's been put in our county every year, it's it's hundreds of thousands of dollars every year that goes to benefit farmers, conservation programs. Uh, our, our real whole deal is about clean water. That's part of the biggest part of our program. Most of the programs we do are about clean water when you get back down to it. And, and those funders being here in the county, so actually, you know, we're, we're an asset. We're bringing money into the county and rather than just being a liability. Well, I mean, just just based on, on, on your information on your tremendous return on investment, so. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? In my experience as a station agent partner with entities like this, if my last county, they had to join three other counties. That's, if this happens, it will really dilute the amount of money that will come into this county because our farmers will not have that first benefit. Yeah, I think that's, that's the big issue we're facing. If, if we lose the employee and lose the office, then, then we are competing with Madison and other counties. I'm not sure if not yet. Good, yes. good for them what they're doing, but, but we get in the queue with them for funding rather than have somebody speaking directly for Jackson County. So we don't, we don't want that. So, uh, <laughs> and so just, just curious, Matt, do you see uh, personal farms, uh, return to, to, to uh, agriculture, uh, home-based businesses, is that on, is that on the, the steady, the decline, or up, uptick in Jackson County? I think what we're going to see as we move forward is that our, we're going to see our farms get cut up into smaller farms because who can go afford 300 acres in one, you know, to buy one property like that? it more likely get split up into 20, 30 acre tracks. Um, just last week, I did a farm visit that was on the Marion County, Jackson County line. It was a man who got the what was left of the grandfather's farm. Um, he can only run a few cows, but the grandfather had to split the farm up because of family and different things that was related to that. And a lot of our farmers are older. 
they don't have retirement savings. The land is a retirement, so I don't blame them for that. But even though he's a small producer, he's got just a few cows, he's looking at putting a beef up every year, selling a beef to his neighbor. So he's, set, he's feeding himself, his family, and also his neighbors. And so with what we just came through with this pandemic, a lot of people are concerned about the supply chain, where their food comes from, can they control what they can tr control in their own sphere? So yes, we're going to see more of those type of things coming forward as we go into the future. I just, I just see it also. Limestone County is one of one of the uh, comps. I mean, Limestone County's farmland is becoming houses, and so yeah. that's going to happen. Somebody's somebody's about to fill that gap. Yes, I'm Gerald Weininger. I'm a retired banker. I was in that lending. So I was agricultural lending. I went through this 80s when we were, I don't know how many years you're familiar with agricultural, but that was a terrible time in agricultural. Anybody that was even around knows it. It, it was bad, bad. But farming is changing. To make a living, you have to be large. To make a living farming. What's going on today is, as Matt says, we have a large number of part-time farmers. That's what I'm retired. I'm 74 years old. I have a few cows. Uh, I have right now 20. Most I care on my property is about 30. I've had more in the past. I've rented more land. It was just, yeah. uh, my nephew helps me. It was just too much of a problem with that. That's what, what we had. So it's just, you have to be large to make a living at it. So what's going on with most everybody is they are part-time farmers if they're trying to and so they're working somewhere in a public job. Their wife's working somewhere in a public job. No, that's what's going on. Let me, let me uh, there's a chart that sort of answers your question. It's a comparison of 2017 to 2012. And it's for Jackson County. The number of farms declined 2%. The number of, uh, the amount of land and acres declined 6%. And the average size of the farm in Jackson County declined 4%. So. That, that showed a trend of declining over those years. But I don't, I don't think farming is going to decline. I think large farms are going to decline. I, I think I think home-based businesses, uh, lavender farms, uh, uh, eggs, uh, 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 people that are, are baking and, and you know, there, there apple orchards. A, and there is a lot of push to add value to what you have. Right. You can either do like Gerald says, you got to get bigger, or you, you got to find your niche. And so that's, that's a whole lot of that's going on right now. If you look at the funding that RCS gives, a big majority of it is of those part-time farmers that we're talking about. Also, the large farmers get money out of it also, uh, but a good, a good portion of that goes to the small 30, 40 cow operation, the guy that's working a full-time job and farming on the side. Uh, we see a lot of those applications come through. A lot of those, a lot of those gets funded. Um, uh, they've, they've had some good projects uh, over the last several years, at least my time involved with it. And, and I think you're seeing more and more of that, actually. Okay, I, I want to ask a question to make sure I understand. And, and maybe I miss her. Are, are, you, are you, today, do you have a retirement program? That I contribute a portion of my income and they uh, contribute a percentage to into the um, <coughs> state, the RSA. Okay, and they, is, who is they? The board, soil water the board. soil and water Okay, board. so out of the funds you have, you're contributing to a retirement yeah. program for CARE. Okay. Okay. So she is on state retirement and insurance. So options we have here bringing under the county system or provide funds to the board and the, and the board then continues the, uh, the way you're currently uh, supporting. Yes, sir. Okay. I take it, John, you have other funds that take care of office equipment needs? So, yes. So our funds take care of all those things. We don't have a ton of office expense. And that's my new computer every few years. We pay for all the internet. Uh, USDA is on one internet system. We own another. We have one of their computers and, and then we have our own and our own operation. <coughs> so, Fortunately, like office expense in our organization is pretty small, actually, for, for an office. It's pretty small, thank goodness. Yeah. We've been bigger trouble than we are. Yeah. 
Really, payroll is the biggest expense we have. The payroll is our biggest expense. Payroll and insurance for top. Okay. And and Kara, uh, uh, current employee, she is the face of the. She's the face of the organization. So everybody comes in the door to see USDA starts with FSA. I mean, with uh, soil water. <coughs> But anyway, everybody that comes in office starts starts with soil water, and and, um, and and then they work their way on into the programs. We have with all those programs and all review of those programs and administration of all those programs. So we're constantly working back and forth with with uh, FSA. So, yeah, yeah. Those that come in office, she's the first contact person. It's the first to have contact with her. Okay. Thanks. I think we in this discussion we want to have uh, invite uh, Mr. Webb uh, for comment. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, y'all, for your time and everybody here. I know we've already run a long time, but. Appreciate everybody's attention, but I'm Matt Webb. I serve as a Jackson County Extension Coordinator. Uh, in two days, I will be have been back home almost 17 months. Um, I have been doing what I do for about 15 years. Uh, this is my fourth county. Uh, I served as an Ag and 4 H and County Director in Extension in Tennessee before I came back home. Uh, I am biased, this is my home county, but of all the counties I've served in, Jackson County has the most potential. Uh, I've told people that Jackson County to me is like the hub of a wagon wheel. We're in between Chattanooga and Huntsville, we're between Knoxville and Birmingham, we're between Nashville and Atlanta. We can go to large population centers within a few hours. Um, agriculture being the number one industry, uh, 153 million. I give you some perspective. If if we were absorbed into the state of Tennessee, we'd be number one in the state of Tennessee by three million dollars. Um, we're number nine here in this state, and so I think it's it's the noblest pursuit that man has ever had is to feed himself and feed others, and um, it's no different in my job. I have a great job. I get to do the coolest things that you can imagine. I have a great staff that supports me and, and great partnerships as well that, that help support us in the extension office. But extension in a nutshell is that we're the front porch to the university. Um, we provide research-based unbiased information that improves the livelihoods and the well-being of our farmers, families, and 4-H kids. Uh, extension was started in 1914. President Woodrow Wilson signed into law on May 8th of that year, the Smith Lever Act. He called it one of the most significant and far reaching measures for the education of adults ever adopted by the government. Its purpose, as stated by Congress, was to aid in diffusing <coughs> among the people of the United States useful and practical information on subjects related to agriculture and home economics and to encourage the applications of the same. Basically, what we try to do in extension is try to help people help themselves. Uh, and that could be something different every day. Today, I got a phone call about Peachtree. Last week, I went on a farm visit. The man took over some land from his granddaddy and wants to run a few cows, grow some grass. Um, I have, as I go across the county, I evaluate needs. As you flip through the packet, there's some pictures of some things. I started some demonstrations on, on relief control. Uh, we have a species that's coming into our hay fields that is a problem, so I started demonstrations there. And you were talking about the, the value-added part of things. I visited a farm in High Top. They were wanting to break it up into rotational grazing and direct market beef, but the wife is producing cut flyers. And so that, that is an alternative deal. I have one farmer who is trying out barley, which will go towards malting, if we can get some things tweaked out right, so I'm trying to help him. So whereas the soil and water provides technical assistance, my office provides the educational assistance. Um, many of you that may have been educators, I think you agree with me that it's vital that our teachers get in services. For those of you who have been businessmen, I think it's vital that our workers get safety training. Where do our farmers get that? 
Some of it they get from us. We have pesticide training so that they know how to use their chemicals safely and effectively. We try to have field days where farmers can come see new practices that will make their operations more efficient, more profitable, and hopefully safer. And on the flip side of that, we try to encourage our youth because our youth is our future workforce. So at 4 age, we try to develop those life skills. So when those kids get to the point, either they graduate high school or they go to college, maybe they'll come back here and be part of our workforce. And so as you flip through your packet, hopefully everybody got one of those. There's kind of a, what I would call an angle report. Um, my contacts for last year was 9,123 contacts. Um, extension is supposed to go to the people. And that's what I tried to do. If you look at those numbers, how I got them broken down, I had about 47 office visits from last year. Whereas if you look at my correspondence and meeting and events, some of those numbers are in the thousands. Uh, I've tried my best, as well as members of my office, to go out and to the people and market what extension is. And that we are a vital resource to our county. Um, you can see the number of field days that we hosted. Um, when I came here and started meeting with the Cattlemen Association and Farmers Federation, I asked them, said, what do you need? What do you want? Um, they said, we want the row crop meeting here. So they, I talked to our regional agent and got it brought here. Uh, and that included dicamba di training, which they needed in order to use that chemical on their soybeans and other crops. We had 45 of that meeting. Um, the Cattlemen Association said we want to see something about uh, growing more grass. We had a field day in Dutton at Mr. Eddie's house, and we appreciate that. We had 74 at that meeting. Um, I think that's pro that is a good size field day by any measure of the imagination. And so you can see the variety there that we did, and if you flip over the back side of that page, um, we're very fortunate. That Vanessa Roberts is our 4-H agent. She started a couple of months before I did. Uh, she has really uh, been out in the bushes working with kids. Uh, we have a school enrollment of, th of 1,423 kids from last year. And she visits with them in the schools from October to March, as well as after school activities. I'm actually missing the livestock club meeting tonight. Uh, they were visiting the Mud Creek Veterinarian to, to be here. So they uh, she's with them tonight. Um, we're excited that we're going to have 32 kids go to full race camp. Um, in years past, we've only had maybe 10 or 12, so we're excited we got that many kids that are interested in going. And then uh, we hired a new uh, SNAP ed educator, uh, Mary Harden. Uh, she's doing the body quest, but our former one, uh, Brandon Clark, uh, she visited over 5,000 third graders last night, uh, last year, uh, teaching them about healthy living. And so you can flip through the pictures there, the, the various things that we did with the kids and as well as the field days and stuff that we did there for the sake of time. Um, but if you look at that census agriculture, I know that we have talked about the, the economic numbers, but a number that uh, I want you to see on the back of the census of agriculture there. and. There's a section there that's called total producers. And it says that we have 2,231 producers in this county. We have two, over 2,000 farmers. Now go all the way down to the bottom of that list, new and beginning farmers. It says out of those over 2,000 producers, we have 730 new and beginning farmers. That is 32.7% of our farmers are new and beginning farmers. Okay. That's an astounding number in my mind because the average age of a farmer right now is 67 years old. Uh, it's gone up every year since I've been doing what I do for a living. And so we have a new generation that's fixing to take over. And I don't know about you, but I'm not sure if I believe everything is on YouTube. And so we try to, in our office, to provide practical information I try to go out to people's farms and homes and, and try to help them find the information or show them things that, that will help them. Now on the next page it shows our surrounding counties and the preparations that they have gotten uh, for 2022. 
As Mr. Nance said, we've not been appropriated from this body since 2018. Uh, in that year, uh, we were appropriated $31,025. Uh, so we, we had basically been living on borrowed time. We had some funds that was left over, and currently that is what our office is having to run on. Fortunately, um, if you take my 4-H agent, for, for example, she gets a travel budget. Hey, quit that AJ. We got still got more to go here. Hello. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> but for myself, I don't I don't have any funds for travel. I'm using what we have in reserve. So when I do go do the visits in High Top or on Sand Mountain or wherever I'm called to go, uh, I don't have I'm using what we have in reserve to do that. There is a page there called the Explanation of Responsibilities, and it kind of gives it a breakdown of what um, Auburn provides. Um, they pay for our internet and our telephone. Unfortunately, our telephone's not working this week, and that's been aggravating. But they pay for that. They pay for our salaries and benefits. Um, so we are a state employee. That's not something that the, the county has to worry about. Um, Y'all provide our office space. Um, like the water, some of that utilities y'all kind of handle. Uh, we join the office with community action. Y'all handle the lawn care. Um, but if we were to get proper appropriations back, um, they would use, be used for you know our travel, communication, our print and cost, uh, office supplies, equipment, program supplies, and a little bit of professional development. And so there is a letter in there, and then there's also what I would conclude as a proposed budget at the end of the packet there. So um, with that being said, um, be happy with any support that we can get. Even if I was given a buffalo nickel, I would tie a knot in that ox's tail and make it work. If I could get it. <laughs> and so uh, with that, gentlemen, I entertain any questions you might have. Any questions? No, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Sorry about the yawn. It was uh, it was because of the excitement. I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah. uh, overwhelmed. Yeah. All right. This 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 is as high pitched as I can. I, I know. I know. Mean, um, but yeah, I you under you undersold, and and I thought I pitched you a softball because I do believe that 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 people are going to return to agriculture. They have to. Uh, because we have to sustain ourselves, but also adding value to your homes, home gardens, uh, uh, home industries. I, th I think those are things that, that unfortunately, we're going to have people lose lots of money because they're not going to know what to do and how to do. And, that's, and I want to make sure you guys are. And that's teaching. another thing, too, is that we've lost a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was growing up, um, I was not encouraged to go into agriculture. Um, even though we, my daddy uh, logged with a pony and we plowed a garden with a pony and, uh, and we always had bottle calves or chickens or whatever on our little place. Uh, but I was always told there wasn't going to be no money there in agriculture. And so when I originally went to college, I was going to be a history teacher and a basketball coach. <laughs> and I, I took uh, one class animal science and I was done from then on. And um, the technology in Ag it has changed tremendously. You know, we got tractors that, um, you know, if you hit the GPS right and you want to put a, a golf ball out there on the tee and hang your golf club on the outside of it, and once you make that round with the GPS unit, he'll hit the golf ball about every time. You know, we're getting that accurate with some things, and so. And that was something I wanted to point out from your report. Uh, you were there was uh, over 20, 27 percent of your farmers do not have internet access, no. which which is an economic desert because if they have that internet access, that's they sell product that way, they can run their GPS that way, uh, they're they're able to keep up with the markets and all all the different things. I mean, you know, you, we're we're putting them at a disadvantage to put them in the spot that, that they don't have internet. So. Now, does that GPS run on satellite or internet? I mean, you, if you're driving around, you look at, and y'all can correct me on some of this, but if you're driving around and you see a van and you see like a yellow dome on the top, 
that's one of the, uh, that's one of the John Deere deals. So they are putting these domes on the on the high spots of the farm. It's connected to the tractor and, and jumping from sideline. So you know, and it's impressive. And even that now is that you're getting all these years of data. You open up an ag magazine nowadays, and if it's not talking about data, there's something wrong. And because I mean, now we have a history of fields, you know, and your grid sampling down to a point now on fertility, almost down to the acre or less. And so, if this acre here needs lime and this one don't, that machine can cut it off. And so, that's a savings in, in, in your nutrients and that sort of thing. And so. I, love I mean, just just take time to watch some of these farmers go across this prairie field. You think when he gets down to the end, one side of the bone goes cutting off. That's not the farmer picking it off. That's the computer doing it. Nozzle by nozzle. Yeah. We, one of the, the big irrigation system we looked at over toward Gurley, that's one of those, we call it smart mm -hmm. agriculture. You can put uh, liquid fertilizer in it. It knows where in the field to put the most fertilizer as sensors in the field. It'll shut off specific nozzles because it won't need as much moisture as some of the other areas. So we're, we're helping conserve and conserve the water there too. And I just want to say that we love having Matt in this county because he's very active and gets the word out and we love Matt. So I'm going to ask the question again. I think that uh, Commissioner Buckner asked of soil and water question was how much uh, the answer was whatever we could get but, uh, I didn't get I didn't get a number 15 is that what you're looking for 15, 15 for well, extension. is it on the on request okay. that, that's for me I'm sorry I didn't read the whole packet so I, don't I don't know I was just 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 I that's what I'm looking for. And that, okay. that for me, that's the bare minimum to try to keep doing what we're doing. Have we moved into the electric tractor stage yet? Complete. Man, that scares me to death. I know. Just it does. How are you going to charge it? I know. That's, that's <laughs> what I was sitting here thinking. Well, I, I heard a story last year where, where one company was trying to get a couple of farmers to try out electric combines. And, and Mr. Dean can testify to this. I mean, they're driving miles between fields. Now there's a good side of that because if one side of the county gets rain and they have a field over there and another one don't, then that kind of helps a little bit. But you know, you take something like the Danes where they may travel 15, 10, 15, 20 miles to move equipment, or you take somebody like the Chandlers who's farming some ground up near Russell Cave, it takes them two and a half hours to get their combines up there. You know, so. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Great presentation, but thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, we need to do some due consideration here and put this on the agenda, new business agenda for the next meeting. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So we will do that. Uh, so, thank you. It, it, Next on the agenda with Public Works, um, there are a couple of grants. Uh, one TARCON has a $400,000 grant that is uh, uh, for uh, safe streets and roads grant. And we also applied uh, at our Public Works. Uh, Mr. Campbell and his staff applied and we have a grant. So we'd like to have a little discussion of how we could cooperate together uh, with, with those two grants for the benefit of Jackson County. So Mr. Campbell, please. Thank you, Chairman and Commissioner. Just as a follow-up to our last meeting where I did make an announcement of the um, notice of award that we received for the SS4A, which was Safe Streets for All Grant. Um, it was apparent in the bipartisan infrastructure law that the discretionary funding and the road to uh, achieve and secure any, any or parts of that would require a comprehensive action plan. So, uh, Gary Matches from our office shocked, shocked the public works world and was a hero of our staff meeting when he unveiled the fact that we were selected. So we were one of eight recipients and TARCOG being another recipient, uh, that's two of eight that you have in the room before you deny. So 
as far as moving forward in the next step, next phases of that, uh, conversations mm -hmm. that were held today uh, between all of us, with Ms. James included, about how we can move forward and uh, benefit Jackson County in this process. We certainly want to work together and combine our efforts in this plan going forward. Um, so I would like to answer any questions you may have uh, before I turn it over to Ms. James. Any questions? Uh, Ms. James, comment from you? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so Top of Alabama Regional Council of Governments also served as the Rural Planning Organization, or the RPO, for um, any areas surrounding the Huntsville Area MPO, or Metropolitan Planning Organization. This is to do transportation planning and consulting services. We applied to the SS4A um, opportunity as a region. So the, our study area for our action plan includes our RPO region, which is Limestone, Jackson, DeKalb, and Marshall counties. Um, we hug the Huntsville, Madison County MPO. Um, and so you all, Jackson County, were included in our efforts. We did not do our due diligence to uh, you know, consider other applicants prior to applying. It was sort of one of those, let's see what happens here um, applications. But now that we have received a $400,000 grant, we kind of looked at it as 100,000 per county that we are studying. And Jackson County has also received their grant. Um, we have talked about how we might be able to align our efforts. And this is all to study transportation safety so that you can identify projects to then go after follow on implementation funding or to address those issues. You are un not eligible to apply for the implementation funds until you have the action plan in place, which is why we went after it for all of our regions so that everyone from Athens to Scottsboro to Jackson County to um, Gunnersville and Fort Payne could all be eligible for the funding. We wanted to kind of open it up for our whole region. Um, but look forward to continuing to work with Mr. Campbell and his team and how we can line, align our efforts. And once we get more information from Federal Highway on, on next steps, I think we'll be in a better position to really um, know more about how we're walking together on this. Okay. Any comments or questions? Thanks very much for the update. I don't want to be the rude one in the room, but I have an eight, six, and three-year-old at home waiting on me for bedtime. So I'm going to thank you all very much. Yeah, good. Thank you. So next, uh, discussion of uh, railroad grade crossing and improvement agreement. Hopefully in your information, uh, you'll find a combination of forms that look, looks like the ones I'm holding up. So this was notification that came last week from LDOT, and this is an opportunity for improvement of an at-grade rail crossing. This crossing is located on County Road 93 near the Tennessee State Line, just south of New Hope, Tennessee. Um, it's an at-grade crossing that's on our county road and has all of the existing items currently that will be improved. So these are passive warning devices that this agreement would improve. This is essentially an opportunity for us to get something with very little return or investment on our part. Um, the state receives federal funds for railroad crossing improvements as part of a highway safety improvement program. And this is these are funds that require our end user agreement to allow the state to perform. So there, there is a... Um, overall plan view of the work that's being proposed with this agreement and it includes updating the passive markings and legends that are on the road as well as the warning signs and the signs located at the crossing so cross bucks stop signs stop ahead signs railroad ahead signs and then the uh, pavement marking and legends would all be included in this upgrade the state would perform the work and that depiction there shows the work that would be requirement of the county, which essentially would include tree trimming, ownership once the project is complete, and then future maintenance of the signage and marking. So, I've included a photo just for you, just for your reference, to see present day state of the condition of the markings, signage, and then the tree work that that would need to be done. And I would argue that uh, this work really needs to be done anyway. I've included a, um, the top page is the agreement that was presented to us by the state. Mm -hmm. And then also included um, just the format in which we would prepare a resolution uh, for your consideration to approve. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? 
No, it's just perfect project in my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I may, one quick, do we need, can we take this up and approve the next meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll put it on new business. And, uh, thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we have concluded our uh, uh, work session. Uh, at this time, let me reports from the staff. County Administrator? How many thank you this time? Thank you. Uh, County Engineer? Yes, no, sir, thank you. County Attorney? I'm good, thank you very much. Any comments from any of our other staff? Okay, with that, we we'll go to comments from the commission, uh, District 4, Commissioner McBride. I uh, want to say thank you to everyone for uh, coming to the meeting tonight. It, it, it's really nice looking out in the crowd and seeing all the chairs full, especially Logan. Logan, I appreciate the, uh, the work you do uh, and, and just keep up the good work. You know, I think we'll do good things. Yeah, I'll try. I mean, Y'all no, stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, District Three, Commissioner Buckner. Yeah, just uh, I, I want to echo uh, Commissioner McBride. It is it is nice to to, to have people that are actively concerned uh, petitioning. It makes the it, it puts a face to the work, and so we're thankful that uh, that you that you're willing to come out. Uh, glad glad you're here. Uh, I just want to say that uh, super excited. We had a, a a great opportunity to go out to uh, Pisgah the other night and see what they're proposing uh, for for a potential site uh, additional site in jackson county uh, just just another one of many things that are happening in our county and, and so we're, we're just excited to, of our of our bright bright future but thank you sir commissioner uh, district two uh commissioner kenmer i also like to thank everyone for being here and uh, god bless everybody and we appreciate what all the county workers are still trying to do I got a uh, sheriff on my mind right now. God bless him too yep. on his journey. District 1, Commissioner Gulley. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's, it, I echo again, it's good to see public involvement in with uh, local government. I'd like to thank the folks from Soil and Conservation District for what you do for the county and, uh, and know that, that, that it's not following deaf ears. We appreciate you being here and we'll, we'll certainly take into consideration what we can do to help you. And uh, I'd like to thank the folks from Tarkov for the work that they do and folks from the Extension Service. It's good to see everybody here. And Logan, proud for you to be here. Thank you. I'd just like to say again and, and, and echo what everybody said. Uh, Logan, thanks for being here. Thanks for what you do. Thanks for your willingness to come here and stand before us and talk to us and really appreciate that. And I'd just like to say, we're blessed to live in Jackson County. Amen. Uh, our next meeting will be March the 13th, uh, 2023 at uh, five o'clock. At this time, we'll move into an executive session. Uh, if I can get a motion to enter into executive session to discuss matters of purchase or sale, lease of property and discuss good name and character. No, motion. We have a motion, do you have a second? I'll second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. At this time, we will. Uh,